I moved to Vegas in 1985. I was a senior pastor of Central Christian Church, and at the time, the population of the valley was just about 550,000. And so from 85 on, the dramatic growth really started to hit Las Vegas. And I think it was about 1990s that really became clear that if we were gonna make a dent in this valley for Jesus Christ, we couldn't do it alone as a church. And so we started thinking about what could that look like, and we wanted to set aside some funds in order to be able to launch it. We knew that we were gonna need a leader. So he calls me up, and he says, hey man, I see you've been going around and stuff, and I've been praying, our church is gonna plant a new church in Vegas, and, uh, <laughs> and we've been praying for a name, somebody to come lead it. He said, your name just keeps coming. I said, me? He says, yeah. I said, where are you calling from? He says, Vegas. I said, I ain't coming to Vegas. <laughs> All I can describe is God did something in Mike's heart, and I really believe that's true. And uh, I remember the first time he and Debbie came out, I was driving them around the northwest part of the valley, and when he saw it at night all the lights of Las Vegas from kind of an elevated perch. And I felt like God was saying, you know, you see those lights over there that represent people without hope. Those lights over there represent people caught in the throes of addiction. Those lights over there represents kids who are in dysfunctional families. So we just stepped out and said, we're going to Vegas to plant a church. He wanted to create a team so that from day one, when the church start started, it was based on a, on a team concept approach. I talked with a buddy of mine uh, who was in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, just a tall guy named Kevin Oder. You heard of him? Anyway, Kevin and I had talked before about planting a church together. You know, we said, hey, someday we ought to do that. We weren't really serious about it. We thought, yeah, somebody you're gonna do that. So I called him up, said, hey man, I'm gonna plant a church. So we met him up in Cincinnati, went out to dinner, and all four of us felt like we're supposed to go to Vegas and plant a church. Uh, if I had not known better, I would have uh, accused Mike of a divine conspiracy, that the, it could not have gone better. Uh, for here's this Midwest couple who were homeschooling their family in the heart of the Bible Belt, in the buckle of the Bible Belt. Every single conversation, was a click forward. There wasn't a church planting handbook back then. There wasn't like a, a group like Orchard Group or some of the groups that just help church planters these days. We were just making it up as we went. I, I think we were one of the few churches in that day that were thinking about, hey, let's take a healthy mother church and send hundreds of people uh, to go be a part of that so that from day one they can start. And I can even remember our language was, we'd like to start a church so strong that within a year it could be a church of over a thousand. And they dreamed of a church that had size and that would have a staff at the beginning. Our first weekend, we had 725 people. I mean, that is bigger than any church I'd ever grown up in ever attending as a kid. And uh, I'm sure there were other larger church plants in history but to that point in time, from what I was aware of in the church world, this was the largest single church plant I had ever been aware of. 725 people our first weekend. Uh, I was at the Y, across from Meadows Mall. So we set up chairs and stuff and used racquetball courts for kids' classrooms. Some people that were from the beginning know how hard it was, man. Rolls of carpet and we had Olympic-sized baptistry pool that we baptized people in. It was a blast, man. The first five years, we were a set-up, tear-down church. One year at the Y, basically, and then four at Cimarron. It was a great location and a great facility for us, and the set-up and tear-down was very hard, and we have legendary stories about trucks breaking down and uh, things not being okay or the air conditioning breaking down at the school or all those things are part of the realities of set-up and tear-down. Uh, Cimarron was a godsend. Cimarron was a god thing as it took a U.S. Supreme Court ruling to open up schools to nonprofits, and we were the first church that was in a, a school in the, in the state of Nevada. Uh, Cimarron, fond memories, and God used it big time uh, to mold us and as a launching pad for uh, what God wanted to do in our future. When I came to Vegas, I found it refreshing that you just knew where people stood, you know? And so you knew what you didn't, you didn't have to fake it. 
it was so fun to have, not have to like work through all that stuff, you know, to just say the grace of God's for everybody. I feel like the story of Canyon Ridge has had a rippling effect. You know, I think you can almost say it's become cool to plant a church in Las Vegas, but that wasn't true 25, 30, 35 years ago. The three years working with Mike were hugely impactful to me. I mean, planting Canyon Ridge uh, with, with those guys in that team that we put together, it was just the highlight of my life. God just blessed that investment, you know, beyond what, I mean, it's all been beyond what any of us could have imagined. Nobody's more surprised by it than me, and, and uh, you know, you, you just really know it is, it is a God story. And, you know, you just think that you have the privilege to be a part of it. God has put us here at this time, in this place. And people can come in where they're a name and they're known and they leave with hope. Maybe that's what this place will be, is a, is a center of hope, where the hopeless and the ones that need help come to find the ultimate hope. Cars, people, chairs and circles, auditorium, a place where people matter. It's gonna happen on this desert land in a way that we never had a dream it could. God has positioned us as a church for such a time as this. There is still an excitement uh, from that scene of, of what is in the future of this town and the spiritual need that is in this desert. And we need to steward the resources that God has already given us as we extend it into neighborhood after neighborhood that needs God's grace.